G'day folks, it's Rob here and welcome to our Backyard Farm and Aquaponics YouTube channel. This week's clip includes a little bit of a look at the aquaponics and also some lettuce seed saving and the veggie beds out in the front yard. I'm trying to keep the uh, little vlog update split between um, general gardening and um, aquaponics, so just to keep everyone happy. So I've got a few people from each camp following us here on YouTube. I'd also like to send out a huge thanks to all of the, all the marvellous folks who are following us over on Patreon. And you can check out our super contributors down in the description below. And while you're down there, you can also hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I do hope you enjoy the uh, little vlog updates I've been posting. And I will catch you later with a veggie pod clip in about a day's time. Cheers, folks. Afternoon, folks. A little bit of a catch up on what's going on with our um, rodent issue out the front here. I had that trap set up with some peanut butter in it the other day and nothing happened with it and I set it up with a um, corn cob last night as well and we still haven't seen any hairy little blighters and the little humane traps that we've got uh, the little rodent mice ones, sized ones they've still got their peanut butter in them so yeah, it uh, hasn't taken the bait, literally uh, what I've done is I've planted this bed out with some corn seedlings today and I've popped the trap in the bed. I'd say that's probably a better position than where it was previously. It was in between the two beds. So yeah, hopefully they'll um, they'll come up here and have a bit of a gander. Uh, the corn, I purchased uh, three punnets of corn from the garden center and I've just planted them out fairly deep. Uh, so there should be roughly, I think there's roughly around about uh, 26 or 27 plants in there. So there should be more than enough nutrients in this bed from when I originally fed it up. Of course, I pulled out the amaranth that was in here as well, saved some of that to um, be used inside. But yeah, hopefully we'll get a decent crop of corn out of this lot. These guys over here in the bed next to them did really well, and I'll be pulling out the mulcher uh, next week to do some tidying up out the back. So they'll get mulched and just dumped back on top of that bed there. As for the Kajari melons, well I haven't gotten on top of the mildew issue but I have been squishing a load of these little fellas, the little 28 spot um, ladybugs. I've been squishing a load of them. They seem to be going for the young fruit and the flowers. So, but as you can see I'm still having um, uh, mildew issues. When, once the sun goes down totally from this spot here, or goes, falls behind the fence, um, it actually is setting over that way tonight I think. Um, yeah, I'll be out here and spraying it with some, um, some of the eco fungicide, which is a potassium bicarbonate based one. And um, we'll see how that goes. So I've been bagging up a lot of these smaller ones this afternoon. I did miss a few and they got hit by the fruit fly. But there's a few more in there and a few more over there. Sorry about the glare, folks. I'm trying to use my hand to um, stop it from hitting the lens. So hopefully we'll be um, getting a, a half decent harvest from here. I've already been through and counted the ones that are either bagged up or matured um, fast enough. Like these ones down, sorry. That one down there, there's another one down underneath this one over here. Um, those guys there, they matured quick enough and their skin got hard enough that the fruit fly didn't hit them. And there's another four or so in the bed here. So I'm pretty chuffed with the way they're going. I think I counted nine all up. Um, I've got to the stage where the fruit fly won't blow them. So along with this two, four, six, that'll end up being 15. And there is more than one plant in here, folks, too. Um, so this just isn't one plant. I do um, want to bag up a few more, but the little bags I've got at the moment are wet. We've had a lot of rain here lately, and I didn't realize these guys got saturated. So I'll let them dry overnight out here, and then I'll um, use the little bread twist ties or bag ties and put them around the rest of the melons. So there you go, had a few people ask about the melons. They are an interesting looking one and definitely the best melon we've grown here. Uh, last year I was saying they're, they're practically indestructible, but then this um, mildew hit. So I think it's just part of our very wet um, spring we've had. So that hasn't helped a lot at all. And the rosellas, by the way, they are doing fantastically well. Uh, if you haven't um, seen rosellas before or know what they are, they're also called a Jamaican sorrel um, or an edible hibiscus. I've previously done a clip on them if you want to check it out. Um, there'll be a little link up there. There we go, up there. Uh, just on um, how we grow them here, a few tips and also a couple of recipes. Just quickly before I go, one thing I didn't include in the last clip was the figs. It got a little bit long-winded. So we do have a few little figs growing out of this um, root pouch out the front here. 
Uh, it's about time that everything out here gets a bit of a feed, so uh, they've been watered regularly with the rain, but I think uh, they were supposed to be fed up last weekend, but because it was so wet, I didn't want to risk them just being washed out. Over here to the finger lime, um, I've been complaining our finger lime hasn't been doing much, and then um, this week has put on a load of growth. Friends of ours, about 20 minutes drive from here, Mark and Allison, have got an awesome little finger lime tree growing on their front deck in a little pot. Theirs has always done really well. Uh, we were around seeing Mark the other day and his has already got f um, flowers on it. Uh, just down here we have the old bathtub. We're sort of um, not too sure what we're going to do with that yet. Just depends on how quick we start doing the renovations. We might start up a, um, a water chestnut garden in there or maybe just another pond. We'll wait and see. And over here we have our kaffir lime tree. I was speaking to someone the other day and um, they said theirs are starting to get fruit and wanted to know what they could do with them. Not a lot really. Uh, Bianca um, takes the skin off as zest and freezes it and you get a drop or two of juice out of them but not a lot really. Uh, we're mainly in it for the leaves. Uh, the leaves go into um, the cooking. Probably one like that would go into a um, Thai style curry or an Indo style curry for Bianca and I or maybe two or three if we're having um, guests over for a larger meal. There we go folks, a little bit of an update on what's growing on out the front here. How's it going folks? Thought I'd show you another little pest issue we're having in the aquaponics. We have a load of these little, um, might be a bit hard for you to see, but the onion aphids. They're attacking my chives. So what I've decided to do is clean out this bed. I'll clean the plants out, that is. I've got a couple of beetroot over there that are the leaf variety. Thank you very much, David. I might pull them out, mainly because we've got more than enough Brazilian spinach there and over there, and there's some Okinawan spinach there, and just salad greens all around the place. I mean, we've even got a load of volunteers along the side here. They're yeah, looking a little bit wilty today, but I harvested a batch of um, parsley from down there for last night's dinner, and there's more lettuce over there, so. These beetroot can come out, but yeah, I'm going to um, empty out this bed here, flood it, and then uh, collect as many slugs as we can tomorrow. I won't do it today, I'll wait till Bianca's home. Bianca, Kira and I can make an afternoon of it, picking out slugs. I thought I'd just give you a bit of a look at this Brahmi too. Absolutely powering along in this weather. Loads of little flowers on there. And just down in here, you can see all the coral lettuce that I need to harvest seed from. So I might hook into that in a little while after I knock off a few other jobs like uh, just walking around and checking out the system. Oh, the bell was off this bed here because some wombat got sidetracked the other day filling up the sump tank. I was also feeding the patch with some um, liquid fertilizer, some um, carp based fish emulsion. And yeah, I overflowed the system just slightly. So I'm just uh, taking the bell off and this afternoon it can go back on because then there would be enough water that's been used out of there just through transpiration from the plants and a slight bit of evaporation. I'll show you these beans while I'm here. The ginger in here is looking good, but we're about to get a couple of um, flowers set on these guys. And these are uh, basil down here, they will be planted out. I planted three into a veggie pod the other day. And these guys are just sitting just at the top of the water level in this bed here just to keep hydrated. And I'll probably pop them out in the system. They might even go into this little bed here. After I um, vacate, I'll remove some of the greens and bits and pieces. But I'll leave it there and I'll come back in a minute and I'll show you all the seeds I've taken from the lettuce. So I finally got around to collecting the lettuce heads and all I'm doing is just sort of roughing up the stems a bit, trying to get all the heads to fall off. You can see them all falling in the base of the bowl there. There's a, a fair number in there. Just pop them aside in another container. We'll pull out all these longer bits, all these bits we don't need. And the next step is pretty easy. I just pretty much well get all these um, seeds and just rub them in my hands like that, or the seed pods I should say. Um, and all that does is um, split them open and allow all the lettuce seeds to fall out. And then it's just a process of um, winnowing off all the fine char. We should be left with a load of fresh lettuce seed. I'm just bring it back into shot. I'm just using my phone too, by the way, so it's precariously balanced using the Smoothie Pro. So if you go for a tumble, I've bumped the table. So now what I've got is a handful of chaff. There's a couple of heads in there still. 
and you might be able to make out one or two of the little black seeds in there there's one just there so I keep um, doing this and breaking them up as fine as I can and then we'll uh, winnow off some of this chaff so the next part of this exercise is to winnow off and what that means is just to pour the chaff from one container to another until all the fine bits get blown away by the breeze. You can probably see some of them flying off there with all the heavier bits of seed. And it ends up all over me. Just to show you, I've got the majority of the fine stuff out. I've got some larger bits and pieces in there now. So what I'm going to do is just put this sieve over the bowl, pour this in, and hopefully we'll get the majority of the lettuce seeds through and the larger bits and pieces will stay in the sieve. So some smaller bits will come through too, bits of trash, bits of stem in particular generally. But a lot of this actually looks like um, uncrushed seed heads so I can go through and do them again. That's about it. That's all the seed I've collected from those seed heads. And these seeds will just get added into a small little plastic bag and labelled and I'll dish them out to a few people I've already promised them to. Just a quick little update on the melons. I had two melons fall off on me the other day after I gave the plant a bit of a prune back. Uh, what I'm doing is just taking back the worst affected leaves that have got the mildew on it. Uh, so yeah, we the two that were in the little um, bags on this side came off. They're in on the bench just ripening off. Um, uh, ripening up, sorry. I don't know if I knocked them off or what the go was, but yeah. At least we got our first two melons off and we still have a load more on here. And I'm fairly sure the plant will survive to at least let this crop come through to maturity. Uh, as far as the mildew goes, the fungicide I was going to use doesn't work on downy mildew, apparently. It's a little bit loud out the front here, sorry folks. Um, the wettable sulphur really isn't an option on cucurbits because it does tend to burn the leaves from what I've heard. Uh, the other option is a copper based one. Uh, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see how we go there. Uh, also too, just a quick little update on the rodents. Um, I haven't seen any further activity in the rosella bed. Uh, I haven't had any of the little traps go off and they've still got peanut butter in them. Uh, this trap over here did go off uh, twice without anything being in there. So I'm sort of um, thinking that maybe, yeah, it's just being disrupted by maybe a cat walking through the beds or, yeah, I don't know. So, but the corn in here looks to be travelling along all right. The stuff I planted out the other day. I'll pretty much well leave it there, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this little bit of a uh, wander around the patch. Uh, look at the aquaponics and the lettuce and whatnot. And I will catch you next clip. Cheers all. Have a top one.